Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, a very basic introduction to CNC. So a few years back, I saw a couple of videos by John Grimsmo, and here's this young guy, I mean, he was really almost a kid at the time, making knives on this CNC machine in his garage. And my immediate thought watching this was, wow, that would really be a pretty cool thing to have. You know, it was intriguing, but it didn't at all fit kind of my business model or my production model at the time. But, you know, the idea stuck with me and as I've moved from very high-end custom swords to more kind of production-oriented knives, I knew that I needed to get on board with CNC. Uh, so, you know, I've had a mill and a lathe, so I'm not completely clueless about machining, but still, the whole thing seemed really a, a little intimidating because there didn't seem to be any place that you could go to get just a super beginner's guide to CNC. You know, I didn't want to go to community college and take a whole ton of courses. Um, so, you know, where do you start? So that's what this video is aimed at. Um, I'm just kind of trying to imagine where I was, say, two years ago when I started thinking about buying a CNC machine. So in other words, this is an extremely basic introduction to what you need to know just in order to go out and buy a CNC machine that, you know, when you press the red button, it'll make something happen. Well, really, it's a green button. But anyway. This machine is a Tormach 770. It's a turnkey system, meaning that with certain exceptions anyway, you can just kind of send them a check and get a CNC machine that will crank right up and do stuff. I'm not going to talk too much about the Tormach per se, but just describe what all's required to make things with a CNC system generally. And just so you know, I'm aiming this at you know somebody who not only doesn't know squat about CNC machines, but maybe doesn't even know anything about machine tools. Really, really basic stuff that we're going to be talking about. So let's break down, just to start with, what CNC is. Now, I've discussed in an earlier video in this series a little bit on the subject. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. In other words, it's a mill that can be told what to do by a computer instead of diddling around with a bunch of hand wheels like you did with an old-fashioned manual mill. So the system consists of three main components. First is the mill itself. It has a rotating spindle that can run any number of cutting tools, including fly cutters, drills, and various sorts of end mills. That's a drill-like tool, which, unlike a drill bit, can cut sideways or up and down. The spindle can move up and down. In milling parlance, this is known as the Z-axis. It also has a table that moves side to side, that's the X-axis, and front to back, which is known as the Y-axis. All three of these X, Y, and Z movements are driven by little stepper motors, which can be controlled in very tiny and precise increments. So by combining X, Y, and Z movements all at the same time, extremely complex parts can be produced with tolerances in the thousandth of an inch range. Additionally, there's a much larger motor which drives the spindle. All these motors can be made to run faster or slower, forward, backwards, whatever. In addition to the basic properties of the mill itself, there are various add-ons to the machine. Things that will lubricate the machine, things that will lubricate and cool the parts that you're milling. You can also control the tool holders by adding a pneumatic gizmo, which helps you change tools relatively quickly without tightening and untightening the drawbar, which holds the tools in the spindle. And you can even add one, which I don't have, that will change the tools automatically for you. You can add enclosures so that coolant won't splatter all over you can add a stand, a fourth axis, a tray to collect all the swarf that accumulates when you cut. Swarf, by the way, is a fancy word which translated from machinist means crap. Anyway, for reasons I explained in my previous video, right now my machine doesn't have many of these add-ons while it's in this somewhat temporary location. Inside the guts of the mill is an electronic control system which tells all four motors what to do, controlling both the speed and direction of the spindle, but also the movement of the spindle with respect to the part that you're machining and the movements of the table. How does all this junk in here work? No clue. I just keep the door closed and hope to God nothing ever goes wrong. So much for the mill itself. 
Now in order for the mill to do anything, you have to have a computer. You call it a computer, they call it a controller. In the case of Tormox machine, this controller consists of both the computer and a program called Pathpilot. If you want your machine to actually do anything, you gotta order Pathpilot when you buy the mill. Otherwise, you just spent 10 grand on a really super impressive paperweight. The controller consists of a computer, a screen, a keyboard, and this gizmo here called a jog shuttle diddle around with this little wheel, boom, you control the X, Y, and Z movements of the mill, just like with hand wheels on an old-fashioned Bridgeport vertical mill. Now, if this were all that there were to a CNC machine, it would already be a huge step up from a traditional mill. But, of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Using this little interface, you can tell the machine to do things like mill out a pocket, or face off a part, or drill some kind of simple pattern. This is known as a conversational interface. Conversational because, gosh, it's so darn easy, it's like having a friendly old chat with your little machine. I guess it probably seemed that way 30 years ago, but now it seems a little primitive. Again, if this were all there were to the machine, it would still be a huge step up over a manual mill. And all joking aside, it's actually quite useful. But wait, it doesn't just slice, it doesn't just dice. See, here's the money part. The third component of the triad that makes this thing what it is is known as CAD CAM software. CAD CAM is a whole separate thing from the controller here. You're going to have to have a whole separate computer where you do your CAD CAM work. CAD CAM stands for Computer Aided Design, Computer Aided Manufacture. Now there are many CAD CAM and integrated CAD CAM programs out there including Inventor, AutoCAD, Fusion 360, lots more. I'm using Fusion 360, a cloud-based program sold by Autodesk, the company that makes AutoCAD and Inventor. It's reasonably priced, unlike its stratospherically expensive big brothers, and all things considered, quite powerful. As far as I can tell, for guys like me, Fusion 360 is pretty much the sweet spot of what's out there. By guys like me, I mean people in little bitty operations as opposed to people working for big companies. Fully integrated CAD CAM programs perform two functions. First, they allow you to design widgets on your computer. And second, they allow you to tell your CNC machine exactly how to go about making whatever you just designed. Those are very different things. Now the first part, the CAD part, is conceptually straightforward. If you've ever used a draw program, a paint program, or anything of that nature, in other words, if you don't live in a cave, well, then you get the basic idea of what it's like. You draw a sort of little three-dimensional picture out of simple shapes and kind of assemble it into something more complicated. Only CAD programs, as compared to draw programs, are full of weird complexities which derive from the fact that ultimately they're intended to result in physical objects that take up space in the real world as opposed to just making little pretty pictures. The second part, CAM, the manufacturing part, is a little less conceptually obvious. Basically, once you've come up with a design for something, let's say the handle scales for a knife, you have to figure out exactly which tools that you'll use on your mill to make the thing. Not little magical fairy tools like you have in a draw program, but actual sharp, heavy, shiny bits of metal that you can hold in your hand. The implication of all this is that you have to account for how you attach the handle scales to the machine, where it's going to be located, what material it'll be made from, and the precise dimensions and geometry for each and every tool required to make the part. So, if you have experience with manual milling, all of this will make immediate intuitive sense to you. Okay, I need to face the stock with a fly cutter, then I need to mill out this part with a half inch end mill, and this part with a 3 8 inch ball end mill, then this little tiny corner will probably take a 1 16th inch end mill, so on, so on, so on. On the other hand, if you have no experience with manual milling, this will seem like you've landed on a whole other planet. Just saying. That said, fortunately, the CAM part of modern CAD CAM software is really pretty smart about how it does things. The way it works, you specify a tool, then tell the machine, here, chop all this crap out of this hole, or here, make this flat, or here, drill these holes, and it'll figure out a way to do it. In other words, you have to do a lot of the work figuring out what you're asking the machine to do. But, once you define a given task and a given tool, the software will figure out how to accomplish that narrow little task. 
Each of these little operations defines exactly where the tool will go, how fast it'll move, how fast it'll rotate, and so on. The end result of all that is what's known as a tool path. The exact root, speed, and rotation of the end mill, drill bit, or whatever. So there's a story, I'm sure it's apocryphal, about uh, some sculptor, Michelangelo or whoever, and he was asked uh, how he created this sculpture of a beautiful woman. And Michelangelo says, well, you take a big rock and you chisel off everything that doesn't look like a beautiful woman. Uh, so that's what a tool path is. You know, often there's a multitude of tools and tool paths that are required as you mill and drill your way in from this big, you know, piece of whatever to your final destination, whatever that might be. Beautiful woman, knife handle scale, vice jaw insert, whatever it is that you're making. Once you've figured out what all the tools are going to do, creating tool paths for each tool and each operation, the CAM software, using a process known as magic, will generate something known as G-code. In other words, an entire computer program. G-code is a very simple programming language which is used in some variant or other by all CNC machines. If you're not a software geek, you look at this and you start thinking, you know, you have to be like that guy with the weird haircut and the can of Red Bull figuring out how to hack into a CIA mainframe from mom's basement. No, you don't have to know G-code per se. That said, it's a pretty simple language, so you can figure out the rudiments in an afternoon, and that'll really help you at least get your bearings when you look at a G-code program. So, we go from this, a model of an object, to this, a bunch of tool paths showing how we'll remove everything that's not a beautiful woman or a knife handle or whatever, to this, a G-code program. So now we transfer that little program from whatever computer we did the design on over to the PathPilot controller. Boom. Now we have our G-code sitting here resident on the controller. So after all this messing around, it's finally showtime. We have a mill, we have a design, we have tool paths, we have our controller, we have G-code, the entire chain of things required to go from idea to chips flying as your machine spits out that shiny new widget. The moment of truth has arrived. We click this little start button right here and that tells the machine to make a horrible noise, crash the tool into something, and break the snot out of an expensive carbide end mill. Then we whack this red button here, the e-stop, and we try to figure out what stupid thing we did to cause all this sadness and mayhem. Welcome to CNC. But I'm kidding, right? It's not really like that, right? Uh, yeah, it is. I was talking to a guy the other day who runs a big uh, vertical machining uh, center for a major firearms manufacturer. And, uh, you know, this guy's been a CNC, you know, machining guy for 25 years or something. And he was telling me all these stories about crashing tools and all these problems that you run into routinely, uh, you know, with CNC machines, even in a high-end production environment. Point being, CNC is not magic. It's a thought problem that keeps shifting and moving as you work. Tools wear, parts break, specifications change, production schedules change, designs get updated. You're not going to program this sucker, hit a button, walk away, and watch it spit out perfect parts until eternity while you sit around with your feet up on the desk. So what I'm saying is I hate this thing, right? Absolutely not. I mean, this thing is the shiznit. It's totally awesome. It's a really interesting, really exciting machine to work with, and it's revolutionizing how I do my job. Mill, controller, CAD CAM software. That's the chain. That's what you need to actually get started with CNC. More to come next time. I'll talk about some very basic concepts of using the mill itself. <laughs>
If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!